Welcome to part two of the video review for Evasion Mode Optimus Prime by Wei Jang, the oversized edition. In this review, I'm going to go over some of the detailing, the mechanical upgrades, and uh, the articulation. And so the first thing you'll probably notice is, you know, the paint applications, which um, are absolutely stunning. Um, uh, definitely want to give credit out to the original engineers and designers of the toy. Uh, they basically put in the original mold um, all the fine detail that you see throughout this figure. Um, and in some cases, um, Wei Jang has gone and, and done some detailing upgrades to make it more apparent what that detail was in spaces such as, you know, these springs in the arms, um, you know, additional holes in the smokestacks, that kind of thing. But for a large part, you know, I'd say easily 95% plus of it, um, any detail you see here was was in the original molding, such as pieces in the arms, the inner legs, um, thigh details, things like that. Uh, those were there from the beginning. Um, so, you know, so definitely want to acknowledge the work that was done um, in the original toy and Wei Jang is simply taking it to the next level by giving it the paint applications that really bring that detail out and make this so that it it is a, a excellent showpiece. Um, and there are other versions of this uh, character model that have been released that are high level detailed uh, statues that don't transform. The fact that you can get this kind of look um, in a figure like this at this price is absolutely amazing and the transformation is simply graving and, and icing on the cake. Um, so absolutely beautiful. The paint is you know nearly immaculate and I say nearly only because you know if you looked really hard you could probably find a little bit of flaw but in general there really is no over paint or over spray. Um, everything is within the lines that you would imagine it should be. Um, the addition of the flames, the blue applications and highlights gold, silvers, and chromes are, are very nice and where they decide to use them are also very good um, to the point where you know it, it's highly movie accurate. Um, I will point out that you know there is a chrome separation from gray silver paint here. Um, I think it was done because this piece is its own uh, piece versus this which is shared with other paint applications uh, but it doesn't detract from the toy at all. Um, but it is visually noticeable. Um, inner paint detailing on the legs, which is very nice. You can see that here. And I like how they use two different uh, silver metallic colors in there too, just to give it some more visual separation. The golds, flames, detailing on the joint there. And also in the arms, you know, they did a really good job of deciding where to paint things silver, gold, blue, the deeper gray molded plastic and, and the molded reds I think work really well. I especially like their choice of using uh, silver in this space as opposed to the red that the original toy was. I think it gives better design to where the elbow joint is physically on the toy versus where it might actually be um, if this thing were, you know, uh, uh, a more articulated figure. And that's done mostly for articulation, um, for transformation is what it comes down to, which you know a lot of people have complained. It would have been nice if they put a real joint in there. I see why they didn't do it. I also agree a real joint in there would have been nice, um, but the paint apps help improve it. So when you separate the arm like this and you kind of put a straight arm, it doesn't look so odd, right? So I really do like their choice in that. And on the back, Um, you know, it, it pretty much stayed the same. It's not much difference other than the addition of these pieces, which we'll go over a bit in the mechanical upgrades. Um, but those are all very nice. Paint applications on the inside panels in the underarm, you can see here. Really brings out the detail because it looks like they almost, and the dry brush isn't the right word, but they didn't fully paint it. Uh, gray, there's some red underneath it too, so there's there's a little bit more dimension and depth in there. And of course the wheels are, uh, they've got the chrome trim in the rims and these are indeed rubber wheels. So, um, you know, very nice. It's actually a, it's not a very hard 
rubber at all. It's a little bit soft. It's got a little bit of gummy squish on it, um, but it feels very good, very high quality. Uh, the weight of the figure itself is, is very good. It doesn't feel heavy, but it doesn't feel light or cheap in any way. The plastics are very hard and, and very, um, very nice. Uh, and, and I believe there is die cast in here too. And the place that I note specifically is in these panels. They, in transformation, they feel very solid and very metal. So if there was any die cast anywhere I know, um, or I believe that these places is where it's at most. Yeah, okay, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the mechanical upgrades. Um, let's start with the hands, because I think that's one of the places where, you know, it's, it's, um, it's significant. And you can see here from the hands, this, um, these hands are jointed in an interesting way. They, unlike sort of the uh, masterpiece line that you see now where it's got a pointer finger that's articulated separate from the three fingers, these are actually all articulated together. Um, and I think that, you know, that, that was done for the transformation, which I think was done really intelligently. You got the thumb here that is articulated separately as well, but the way it folds specifically with a joint on the back of the hand as opposed to in the center or one that allows forward movement also lends the transformation too. And the detailing on the back of the hand is also really nice with the detail. But you do get um, two sets of joints here, one at the, the base at the knuckles. And then in the fingers, you also get a second one here like this. Um, and you can get you know a lot of different poses with that, including your know, fists holding things um, straight hands out, things like that, and I think it looks really nice and actually feels really good with the, the jointings being really tight and firm. Okay. Another upgrade in terms of uh, mechanical, as you'll probably notice right away, is the shoulder. And the shoulder, um, this piece I think is, is awesome in terms of visual upgrade. Now if you look at the figure as a whole, like this, you can see that the you know not not only was it missing from the original Voyager toy, but the fact that it was missing from the the, the Voyager toy made uh, that toy look a little bit skinny on the top. His arms looked kind of um, kind of weak uh, because he didn't have the the shoulder mass. But this really brings it out. Really brings him more into sort of a warrior look because it's an armor padding, um, and also the addition of these smokestacks on top, which which uh, enabled the the G one. Um, iconic smokestacks of Optimus Prime. I think um, it really adds to the figure a lot. Um, I'll go more into the, the mechanics of what these actually are in the transformation. Um, but the blue flames on it um, are you know, a great balance of color with all the other blues and the reds throughout the figure. So it's, it's very, very nice. Okay, um, another mechanical upgrade, which I probably should have mentioned uh, in the accessories part of the review um, are the uh, the gas tanks in the back and you can see right now that they've got this detailing on it and I think that you know I've simply chosen to, to, to display it that way in this video but really what it is is these are the guns and that's also very movie accurate and when you turn it around you can see too that um, let me move this back. you can see here that I have turned around the gas gas tank to show the detail side but on the inside on the bottom side we've got the, the gun parts and you know that again that's very movie accurate him pulling off the tanks from the back of his his back and then turning it into a gun again flip it around here and you can see that it's it's flat and clean uh, but the gun of course has a more complex look and so that's how you add a little bit of complexity to it if you grab the other one uh, which by the way peg into the back um, through these holes on these add-on pieces. I think maybe you can see them. Um, and that's that's really neat for, for weapon storage. But same deal here, you've got uh, a level of complexity on the back here through a turnaround panel. And what I really like is how uh, these pieces are not um, copies of the same detailing. They didn't just make a piece and duplicate it on two, two separate canisters. Uh, they actually took the time to make them different. And then when you flip out the hand hand peg here, there are slots on this side of the tanks that allow you to fit them together into one cannon. 
And there you have, flipping that down, uh, his uh, gas tank gun. Now I will say that um, I love that they include this in the figure, but in terms of uh, visual impact, I think it's kind of plain, kind of boring in a lot of ways. Um, I'm glad he has a gun, uh, but I really would have preferred them to have a gun that was complex on the level of the... Uh, I guess I guess the Return of the Fallen Leader class Optimus Prime that was released a while back. Um, I know that that might be a bit of a mess or that one a lot of people said is a mess of a gun, but um, I thought it was a lot more sort of um, alien menacing looking than this. This looks kind of flat and in a way um, slightly boring, um, but super glad to have it. So um, preference more than anything else. All right, so quickly I fold this back up. I think if you want to display it on your figure, it's probably most appropriate if you want to be movie accurate to put these in the smooth side as opposed to the detailed side. Um, but I like having the extra detail showing on the figure, and I'll just leave them off for a moment. Now, in terms of other uh, mechanical upgrades, I think the only other one worth mentioning is uh, right here in the legs. And this is, you know, not only for transformation, but it really gives the, um, the wheel cover area some detail and also brings the figure again more in line with what the movie figure looks like where you know the wheels are on the back side um, with a little bit of covering um, as opposed to having the wheels all the way up here and by the way um, that's the same with these wheels here not this one specifically but this one because this one actually is brought up to the top to its partner wheel just like it is in the mood design uh, via this mechanism here on a swing joint which then brings it back down here for transformation of course you have um, this coming up like this and the wheel being in there for this really nice um, wheel covered truck look which is um, absolutely great attention to detail okay so very nice um, in terms of articulation and mechanical upgrades um, the big thing that we see about this figure is that they've added a ton of ratchet joints uh, and I think that's a really smart idea because when you get a figure of this weight and size, um, you want to make sure that you've got um, an engineering and mechanic that allows it to hold its poses where the ones without the uh, ratchet joints will tend to become loose over time or maybe not be able to properly support the figure in certain poses. And where you can see that is here in the arm. There's no ratchet joint for the turn okay you also have it here in the legs right here at the waist have one here in the kneecap okay and I think those are the main places that it has it and the original Voyager figure didn't have any ratcheting joints at all so that's that's very good um, I'm happy with what they've done there As mentioned before, there is jointing right here. The uh, elbow joint is a little odd. It would have been nice to see them put one in here, but I can see why they didn't. But uh, the actual joint is right here. And the range for it, just to straighten out an arm and get something that looks like a straight arm, um, it looks something like this. And from the front, it looks perfectly fine. It looks a little odd from the side because of the geometry here, but um, you know, it still works. Um, I'm not complaining too much, right? Oh, and while I'm here too, I didn't mention mechanically from an upgrade, these panels that used to be behind the hand um, in the Voyager toy are now jointed so that you can fold it behind. And then I think that's absolutely great. That was an eyesore in the original toy, and it's really corrected here. Okay. Uh, fingers we went over, but again, really quick thumb joint. Uh, double jointed hands for the fingers. I'm sorry, double jointed fingers, I should say, on the hands. One here and then one here, okay? And the joint in the back of the hand that allows you to do things like this, okay? Uh, for the head, it can basically, um, it's got two positions the way I see it. One is a sort of setback position that goes like this. Um, he can tilt his head forward like this, like that, can look up can turn around, can actually turn all the way around if you want, 
um, but pretty good range. I actually like, um, I don't like his head to sit far back like that. I prefer that it's up like this and brought forward so that he has a little bit more of height on his neck and uh, looks a little bit more forward. Um, but there is a point where when you push it down, it, it, uh, it kind of locks into place. I don't know if you saw that or not. But there is like a, a lock there, um, which is, is pretty cool. Um, the waist. The wheels here kind of hold the, the waist in place, but it does have a little bit of turn. It's limited only when it hits the wheel, um, but it could spin, you know, all the way around if, if it was free of that. But, you know, having as much pivot as it does here, I think is actually pretty good. There is a joint, um, a swivel right here, which you can turn the leg, and that's also very good. I always love having articulation in this space um, just because it really enhances posability um, of the legs. Um, so that addition I think is, is really good. Um, of course the knees are ratchety and bendy and you can get about that much range on it. Right? Uh, you also have the uh, uh, knee cover which has about that much range in it. Leg can go about that far and go that far back which is very very good um, and then the feet have an ankle rocker which is really nice and has a good amount of range folding forward and back and uh, you know articulated toes which is actually a mechanical upgrade uh, from the original as well I believe the whole piece in the original toy is uh, is one molded piece so you don't get this toe movement but some of that is done for transformation too which we'll get into in the next next part of this okay um, I realize I didn't give you guys a notion of how far the arms go but you can rotate all the way around right you also have a, a turn pivot right here which allows you to do this with the arm and this can go back about that far and go up about that far and that's actually really good I mean that's better than a, a a 45 degree um, but a lot of times you only get an L this one goes you know a lot farther up so that is excellent in terms of articulation a very good figure very posable even the original Voyager toy was extremely posable and this is is no exception um, it continues to show that at almost every level this is an exceptional piece in terms of being an invasion Mode Optimus Prime number one being a, a movie accurate prime overall um, and truly an action figure, an opposable figure, I think um, it, it is scoring high marks in every space imaginable. Okay, um, so that brings us to the conclusion of part two of the video. Uh, stay tuned, I'm trying my best to put up uh, as much uh, detail about this figure as I can because I know a lot of you are, are looking forward to getting it. Um, but hopefully, you know, these videos will give you an idea what, what you will be receiving or, or what you may want to consider getting. All right.